All right, we're back for part three of Flower Math with Ellen Frost and Jenny Love on Floral Guild Radio. <laughs> um, this time we're going to talk about quality tiers that you can maybe set up in flower buying. So basically the grower could think about the quality tiers that they could make available to the floral buyer. And also florists can think about, well, maybe I don't always have to buy the super premium plus plus <laughs> special stem and how mm -hmm. that translates into our flower math um, in particularly in retail sales. So let's start by, I'm just going to ask you a very wide open question. What is quality to a florist? Like, what are you looking for when it comes to quality? And it's all quality the same. Oh, yes. <laughs> um... So I guess for me, like the things I think about with quality are um, like the actual quality of the flower. So stem length. Mm -hmm. um, I know we talked before about harvest stage. So, you know, mm -hmm. is it harvested at the right stage? That you um, need for the record, the harvest stage that's useful to you. Yep. Needs. yep. Um, really like pristine blooms. So I'm talking about you know, flowers that don't have bug bites, that don't have bruises, like the flower itself is pristine. Um, so stem length, pristine, I would say like um, variety is, is a quality issue, I think, um, in that some growers are growing um, you know, more unique varieties, more interesting varieties, more cool colored varieties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that I think is a quality issue. If you are a grower who only has red and yellow coxcomb, you know, from 20 years ago, or you're a grower <laughs> who's growing, you know, all of these sunset colors, that could be a quality, mm -hmm. that could be a quality mm -hmm. issue. Quality yeah. option. Um, and... What else? Like those to me are like the main things yeah. Um, yeah. that I look for in like a quality bloom. Then there's like, how are you like quality? Like, how are you delivering it to me? Right. Are you delivering it in the proper container? Are you bringing it so that my stems aren't damaged? Mm -hmm. You know, like, are you putting zinnias where the heads are getting all bent at the end mm -hmm. of the bucket because the bucket isn't the right size? Are my flowers falling down in the bucket because they're too short to go in that bucket? You know, that's another quality issue. It's like a quality, like a uh, delivery, you know, is, right. is your delivery a quality delivery? Right. Um, do you know what you're doing? Um, those things I think are important. And then like all yeah. the harvest care stuff that we talked about earlier, you know, just is it being, um, you know, is the post-harvest care there? Have they been hydrated? Right been cared for are they in clean buckets things like that yeah all of that sort of goes into quality for me yeah it's so there's sort of quality product right okay so if i'm i'm going to tease this apart a little bit so what i'm hearing you say and correct me if i'm wrong is there's sort of a baseline quality and then there's like these ways you can ratchet up quality there's tiers of quality as you're saying so baseline is it needs to not look like shit <laughs> and yes. it needs to have been hydrated properly so it's not wilted um so it just has to be usable at the at yeah. the minimum you know it has to be at least usable not something that immediately goes into compost which is obviously what everybody needs and wants but then beyond that you can have um, different products mix in terms of like maybe a grower is sort of trendy and up on everything and growing the really cool and funky stuff. That's one level of quality that doesn't necessarily have to pertain to an individual bloom, but it's just that you maybe are attracted to that grower's knowledge and capacity. Then there's um, stem length. And so in the industry, there's this obsession with longer stems, but you maybe don't need longer stems, right? Sure. So like, so a grower could harvest, um, let's say I'm gonna pick on Campanula as a crop. So I grow Campanula in my greenhouse and then I also grow Campanula in my hoop house. And then I also grow Campanula in the field. 
the campanula in the hoop house gets six feet tall or in the greenhouse gets six feet tall. You know, that's like a massive step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the, the hoop house green or yeah, the hoop house campanula gets to be about three to four feet tall. And then mm -hmm. the campanula in this field is, you know, tips out at about 18 to 20 inches tall, if I'm lucky, some years shorter than that. So I'm not going to charge the same price for all of those, but they are all quality stems. They've just got different lengths of stem, right? And does that impact the way you look at flowers Jenny, that are priced and brought in? I want to just go back and say, <laughs> when you said, I'm not going to charge the same price for those stems, I don't think that's a given for all farmers. Mm. I think that many farmers have a product like um, terracotta celosia, mm -hmm. and they say the price is $1 any time of the season, however, any it's length, any okay. length, any, anything. So when you get that first stem and it's two feet tall and it's beautiful and bushy, they might charge the same for a side shoot that's eight inches long oh, wow. six months later. So wow. let's so I don't want to assume that everybody knows <laughs> All right. Fair. that a four foot, a six foot and a four foot and a two foot stem shouldn't be the same price. All right. That's so that's a good point. Establish that. <laughs> okay. So with, and, and the theme of flower math here and yes. how this sort of, so that would be an example of quality tier. Stem length is a quality tier. You can have Absolutely. a short, short stem. You can have a medium length stem. You can have a long, tall stem. So we could call it shorties, standards, and premium. And I would encourage growers, and clearly you would too, to price differently for that stem length. Um, just because it gives a florist options. You want to have this scale of, of price point for that premium, um, you know, nearly six foot tall companula that I have of florist, if they could use that stem length, I mean, some people just don't want that stem length, but if they could, they could chop that stem into like seven pieces and yeah. use it. So I'm going to charge $5 stem for those bad boys because there's the value in there for that stem length. Then with the ones that are like three feet tall, you can chop that into like three pieces. I'm doing like 250 a stem for that. And then my shorties, like that's basically a one, one piece. <laughs> and so that's going to be like $1.50 or whatever. And this is a great way for growers to differentiate themselves within mm -hmm. a market space to Absolutely. not just slap a sticker price onto everything in one scale. And you as a florist then, how's that help you on your end in terms of pricing? Right, when you there's see that so much range? value to me to see grades, to see tiers. Because okay. what that is, just like you said, first, it gives me flexibility. It gives me financial flexibility because I don't have to buy a $6 stem if what I need is a single stem of Campanula that I'm going to put in a bud vase on a cocktail. Mm -hmm. I, I already would be losing money if all I needed was that single stem and I bought that huge thing and I used one piece and I'm like, well, now I've got these 12 other stems, but what do I, I didn't need right. them. I didn't, right. I didn't want them. Um, so that gives me flexibility. I can work better within my budget. I can choose the thing that is right for my budget and for the job. Um, that's huge. There are okay. so few people that are giving florists that option. Hmm. Uh, and I think it is a huge, huge asset if you're a farmer and you can offer that difference. Because yeah. it just, it, it can be the matter of like me buying from you or not. Because I just, if if all you have, I mean, we we have lots of growers that do tears, but you know, like recently I'm thinking of like uh, winterberry, you know, like if you are a grower who says like, I only offer six foot winterberry, you know, I, I need a little piece to put in a wreath. Like this <laughs> thing, I'm not buying that. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. If you said like, I've got six foot, four foot and I've got tips, I can buy a box of tips 
it fits my budget, it fits my job, perfect. Yeah. Huge. It is a huge thing. It is huge. And I think it goes back to the theme we've been going through here in this um, flower math series is this idea that we're creating win-win scenarios for both the grower and the florist and that florists really appreciate when they see a grower or a flower collective trying to offer options, just flexibility, yes. choices, um, different yes. levels uh, is very, very valuable for at least making you feel seen and heard and Absolutely. supported. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, we talk, we're talking about stem length being one of the, one of the tiers, but you could have other things. Like we have a grower who sells snapdragons in grades and the lowest grade is short and crooked. Yeah. So I like that grade. I could use short so and crooked the, all day long. <laughs> great. The biggest grade is tall and straight. Then they're short and straight. Then they're short and crooked. So nice. right off the bat, a lot of growers, because we've, if you're in the ASCFG, if you're in a professional organization, we've been putting a lot of pressure on like highest quality, highest. Mm -hmm. quality. So you may have a crooked snap, a crooked short snap and say, well, I can't sell this. I have to throw this out. And then that's a loss to you because mm -hmm. you, that's less than you can buy then less than you can sell. But if you said, okay, well, let me look at this a little differently. Maybe somebody has a use for short and crooked. I don't know. If you know your florist, you'll know there's a use for short and crooked. And I will almost always buy short and crooked because not only is it great for my designs, it's great for the budget. Yeah. But you but part of that is a communication with the florist to say, is there a market for this? Am I, you know, is somebody could somebody want that? Sure. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. And I think that's what can set us apart, the uh, growers apart and flower collectives, local flower collectives apart from the traditional wholesaler, because at the traditional wholesaler, you are only getting that 24 plus inch, very, very straight stem that can go into a narrow little cardboard box shipped all the way from who the heck Absolutely. knows. And so there are no short crooked stems <laughs> at yes. the traditional wholesaler. But for flower collectives and flower growers, we can offer the crooked short stems, which is a boon and a way to Absolutely. separate ourselves from the traditional supply chain. And yeah. I think that's that's really valuable. So to that end, it would be help. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, <laughs> as long as you are not selling that short crooked stem, not oh. graded in the same bunch with the tall straight stems. Yes. Amen to that. Okay. Okay. That is such a valuable point. Yes. I'm so glad you made it. So you have to standardize your bunches. Yes. You have to grade your bunches into the same quality in each bunch um, within the bunch. And you need to communicate to the florist what the grade or standard is in that bunch. So you can have yes. those tall straights, those short straights and those short crookeds, but you need to keep everything in the bunch the same. The, yes. So it's all short crooked or all tall straight and then so price the accordingly. <laughs> so that I, you know, if I'm expecting 10 tall straight and I get half short crooked and half tall straight, I might only be able to use half that bunch and then half that mm -hmm. bunch is going in the trash. So yeah. that is critical. Yeah. There is a use for short and crooked or short or maybe, you know, lesser quality, but they have to be separated out and they have to be graded properly, and they have to be communicated properly. Yeah. So we have. do you have any growers that you currently work with who are selling like seconds? Like they're, they're purposely like offering this like kind of bucket of not super great quality. Are you interested in something like that? Or does that we seem scary? Have, and... <laughs> it does seem scary. It does sound scary. <laughs> Um, we don't have anybody who is doing seconds. There is okay. not like, a, you know, like vegetable, like produce farmers who, you right. know, see seconds, yeah. tomatoes or apples. Um, we don't really have anybody who's doing seconds. We okay. have people that might be selling things that say, these are so short, they need to be used on a cake or, mm. you know, these are so old, they have to be used today. Um, you know, okay. 
some of that happens, but that's more on a case by case basis, not on an availability list. A standard product, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. It's more, oh my God, to, I have to cut these down today. They have to get used today. Can you use them today? Okay. Uh, okay. Nothing as a second. And it does sort of, right, even just hearing the word seconds with flowers. It <laughs> gives you anxiety. Anxiety. <laughs> Because we are, because, because we are presenting this to the public, right? And so yeah. any feedback comes to us on, oh, why are you trying to sell me a, yeah. a bruised thing that you got for half price or right. a flower that sat out at a farmer's market all day and couldn't sell and now it's here right. at my shop. Okay. So there's not um, really room for like bent and dent. <laughs> seconds. So. Uh, okay. It might be with know. some floors, but not, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Duly noted. Um, I was yeah. just curious if that particular marketing wording would freak yeah. you out, which clearly yeah. it did. <laughs> so, okay. Another way we could talk about quality tiers um, and pricing attached yeah. to that quality tier is how you, re when you receive a bunch from a grower, what is the labor you have to put into using that bunch then? So I'm thinking about primarily growers bunches here, something we already talked about in part one of this uh, podcast series, but you can get growers bunches where the grower just reached into the patch of flowers, the bed of flowers, and just grabbed a handful and cut them off, put a rubber band around them and put them in the bucket. And now they're headed to the florist. So in that scenario, Though that the bunch of the flowers that are in that bunch have not the the foliage generally hasn't been stripped off of them. There'll be some that are past their prime and just need to get taken out. Some that were maybe too young and are going to wilt. So they're no good. But you know, in general, in a grower's front bunch, there's like 20 stems or something yeah. versus that that sort of standard grade bunch for a florist is a 10 stem bunch where the foliage has been stripped off the bottom mm -hmm. and it's been graded and all the things we just talked about in terms of yeah. grading. So this, this could be a way that a grower can change their price point to give the florist more flexibility. So do you calculate that in your head? Like, oh, this grower, I know, maybe I, you could work with a lot of growers. So maybe you can think in your head. I have this scenario where there's this one grower that Thank sells you, right now. You can think of them great. Okay. So there's one grower that sells dianthus and they don't clean them off at all. And this other grower that sells dianthus and they clean them nicely off and their price point is different. What, what's your, just give me your, like, spill yeah. it out. What, what are you thinking when I say these things? <laughs> I'm thinking, is this a product that like, how long is it really going to take me to clean this? If it snaps, because we, the grower that I'm thinking of sells snaps like that, not cleaned, mm -hmm. super easy to clean snaps, takes me one second. So I'm like, yep. already I'm getting a deal because it doesn't take me any time to clean a snap. Same grower basically cuts down an entire celosia plant at the base, hands me the thing. And, you know, there's a thousand side <laughs> shoots and there's like, right. I don't, I don't even know what to do with it. It's and a tree. I'm, it's a tree. It's a tree. <laughs> and as I'm cleaning it, all I'm thinking of is I'm throwing so many side shoots out. I should be saving these side shoots for something. Yeah. I should be, and my, it's so much work mentally, not even mm. the physical work of it, but mentally, every time I like, I'm like, oh, there's, there's a nice side shoot, but Those I don't. decision. You have to make decisions constantly about it. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly, the mental yeah. rigmarole of that is a lot. The other thing okay. I'm thinking is: is it a is it a flower that really should have been um, hydrated better than just chopping the plant off and giving it to me? Because mm. sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't touch that for a little while. That might sit right. in the cooler a day or two, and then I'm like, we really should have taken like Alstroemeria. We, the same right. girl comes in and it is covered in leaves and it's in a sleeve. Yeah. And if I don't clean that, the moment I get it, it's going to get moldy. The It's going to get wilty. It's going to get, you know, there's a whole thing. So to me, I'm like, well, I could have just paid the extra to get right. it cleaned and processed correctly. So I can just let it sit 
on right. its own for a little while. So these are the sort of mental things I'm thinking about as I'm thinking, is it worth a 70 cent stem over a dollar 25 cent stem right. to do these things? Okay. And do it's all the, about- Do I have the staff? Do I have the skill? Right. Do I have the exactly. space? Yes. Yeah. It's, and that's what I was going to say. It depends on this, on this um, farmer florist relationship who has the most staff basically basically it comes down to staff it's labor yeah well you know how you process the stem somebody has to process the stem Somebody's so it's either the team at the farm processes the stem or the team at the flower shop processes the stem and then it's a choice um so say you're a grower who doesn't have that big of a team and you want to just be able to produce volume and so maybe you're relying on those growers bunches the basically you're not processing much of anything and then the florists know, oh, this is what's going to happen. And they may or may not buy from you because they do yes. have staff or they don't have staff. And so if you're yes. selling as an individual grower in that scenario to florists, you maybe have less um, leverage in the market space. You have, you have a place in the market space. You're occupying a niche, but it's a niche. Um, if you're selling through a flower collective, um, like the Philly Floral Guild, it's good. It's it's great if we can have some growers who are doing growers bunches, some growers who are offering snapdragons and very clean stems, some that don't have clean stems. Um, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know dial this home. Is you need to communicate what the processing is on that bunch, and yes. so the florist is not surprised, and the price point needs to reflect that yes. level of processing. So if you've spent yes. a lot of time processing your stems, then that's more of a premium stem. If you're just doing churn and burn fast stems, then yes. that should not be a premium price point, <laughs> basically. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And, and the, I and think the for you guys, for the guild, it's great because you have, if you're selling to a hundred florists, you're going to have florists with all kinds oh, yeah. of needs you're going to have yeah. people who have a lot of staff and people who have no staff so exactly that gives them the more option yeah you know, exactly the thing that is the best fit for them yeah and i think i think that really is is my goal um when when you know helping to to support all the people involved in philly floral guild is to think about that that product mix it comes back to product mix just like everything else and for the record i want to just drive home this point too which i'm sure everybody's already picked up on but i like to be thorough is that in those two bunches we just talked about let's say snapdragons the super cleaned off snapdragons and the still fully leafy snapdragons yeah. the flower itself is the same quality like, it's Absolutely. not like there's a change in flower quality. We're just talking about processing and presentation, so to speak, to the florist. And that's where these yeah. quality tiers come in, where it can be one price versus another price, but it's the same flower, yes. ultimately. And then another one Absolutely. I wanted to, to tease out and pick on, because you said it um, really closer to the beginning, about how something might arrive sleeved or not sleeved um, to your mm -hmm. shop. And so... Obviously for growers, when we're sleeving, that's additional labor and an additional cost for the sleeve. It's not a lot, but it's something. So something. It, do you think about that too, when you're buying from your, your great stable of uh, diverse growers and you know, one sleeves and one doesn't, do you, is that part of your decision-making yeah. process? Yeah. Okay. We tried to, uh, this was a couple of years ago. We try to to tell all of our growers never to sleeve. That oh, we didn't, interesting. That we didn't want any sleeves because it was an added step for us to deal it's with. It's labor for you um, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we have to, you know, and we were more concerned, we were less concerned about, you know, somebody sleeving with a craft paper sleeve, you know, a, a room craft paper right. sleeve. Right. Yeah. We were with people sending in, you know, plastic sleeves, plastic. maybe recycled, you know, like just mm -hmm. stuff that we were throwing, creating trash for ourselves. So yeah. we were like, look, we don't, we don't want that. Um, and really we were finding it more with growers that sold to wholesalers because wholesalers really require sleeves. Yeah. They require sleeves. Like, yeah. You're just sleeving everything. You're getting what you get. Um, <laughs> And that, frankly, 
was kind of where it came down to. Um, so sleeves for us, it is an extra, it's an added task that we have to deal with. It's more trash that we have to deal with. Um, and unless it is a product that just has to be sleeved because, you know, for whatever reason. Damage. Like dahlias. Paper. Dahlias will lose their heads if they're not sleeved. You know? Dahlias are <laughs> one. Um, yeah. You know, our garden roses, we've gone through all kinds of ways to bring garden roses. Sleeves have been the best way. But there are only a few products that really, really need sleeves. Um, and so, again, that's there's a cost for you. There's a cost yeah. for us. Yeah. So avoiding sleeves can actually be a good thing because it can bring down the price point a little bit for the grower if we don't have to put the sleeve on and we don't have to pay the I don't know, eight cents a sleeve or whatever, <laughs> then we don't have to pass that along to you. I do, I know I'm, I, I can hear some of our oh, yeah. uh, Philly Floral Guilds florists crying out right now, but what about all the damage that happens? Yeah. I'm in, I don't I'm want in no, damage. I like, yeah, yeah. I, I like I no sleeves personally, but yeah, yeah. there's a trade-off. I feel like there's a trade-off in the labor versus the damage. So if like one stem is going to get damaged, oh, well, you know, maybe it's less labor to pull those sleeves off, but, um, and you could still use the stem a lot of times for the record, you could probably still use it. It just might be broken a little bit. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, I know there's going to be other people who are like, I would be so upset if something came in without a sleeve absolutely. and I can, I can absolutely see the perspective of that too. So absolutely. yeah. And yeah. especially for florists who are buying like more from the wholesaler because they're used to getting things in mm. sleeves, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. used to that being the standard. So things that aren't sleeved might seem strange to Unprofessional. them. Unprofessional. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. And for us, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not willing to give up quality for the sleeve. Right, it has right, to, okay. It has to come un, unbruised. And if the only okay. way you can do that is through a sleeve, then sleeve it. But I don't, okay. want, I don't want everything to come in a sleeve just because, I don't know, because you think that's mm -hmm. professional or you have to put a sticker yeah. on it or, you know. Right, so like sleeving eucalyptus. Like there's no need to sleeve no. eucalyptus. No. That, no. That's a waste of a sleeve. <laughs> not send, no, eucalyptus does not need to be sleeved. Right, Absolutely. right. And that, the, and this, is, you know, everything works in different systems. So yeah. flower collectives, we might need to put sleeves on stuff so we can differentiate between different farms. You know, I'm just Absolutely. putting, you know, there are reasons when sleeves are used besides just, um, protecting the product, but I, I do think that sleeving is a, a kind of a waste in a lot of ways. And I would like to get people to let go of sleeving some, I will say at Philly Floral Guild, we only use craft paper sleeves. We have no single use plastics in our supply chain whatsoever. So, um, so at least we got away from plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And it can be recycled. So that's terrific. And yeah. I would say one other place that I see, especially maybe for you guys, or I see it more with our co-ops is when you are sending a bucket that is a mixed bucket. So, mm -hmm. you know, it has three bunches of tulips and three bunches of freesia and three bunches of whatever. Sometimes mm -hmm. people will sleeve the tulips just to, you know, keep them separate yeah, or keep, keep them yep. tall or yeah. keep them, you know, so I get yeah. it. I'm not like an anti-sleever. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's worth acknowledging that, there's pros and cons to sleeving yeah. and, and cost, cost, cost. I think maybe what I really want to focus in, the farmer, there's a cost. There's a cost for the florist. Yeah. Cost of the florist. And so when we're talking about flower math, we're looking for ways, ultimately this whole podcast series is all about trying to find the win-win scenario for both the farmer and the florist and maybe skipping the sleeves, something that we just sort of do out of habit a lot of times because we think it's the professional way to present flowers maybe it's actually just a waste for both sides yeah. of the table. But. Or maybe your florist loves sleeves and mm -hmm. when you don't sleep, they're going to be mad. So again, yeah. just talk to each other, yeah. talk to each right. other and see what is the best, you know, the yeah. best situation. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think we hit most, I think my list at least of <laughs> ways that you could have quality tears, but just to yeah. finish off this conversation, 
why is having quality tiers helpful to you as a florist? It's because you can, if you have a retail vase, you can then choose different because I can, Because it puts the power in my hands. I can mm. choose the thing that best fits my job and my budget. If I only have one option, oftentimes I'm getting something that's not quite right for my job and maybe not quite right for my budget. And I'll buy it, but it's better if I can get something that's better fit for my job and better fit for my budget. Yeah, amen to that. And that's what yeah. we try to do at PFG is to give as many options as possible so that you can buy just the right thing that you need. And, yeah. I, and I think that's to, you know, for all flower collectives and all growers across the country or the world, <laughs> um, I keep forgetting a podcast goes international. So who knows, maybe Everywhere. somebody from Finland is listening to us, in which case, hello. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the value that we can bring to a florist is this flexibility, is this a uh, custom relationship instead of the cookie cutter. You're just another number in our list of thousands of customers. That is usually what is in the traditional supply chain. So yep. yeah, cool. I like, I like that topic a lot. I'm glad we talked about it and hopefully it'll help both farmers and florists figure out how to um, yeah. connect better. So all right, so that was part three of this wonderful series, which is turning out to be super fun to have I this know. conversation. <laughs> well, next part up is going to be all about delivery and handling fees and how those factor in to flower math. So come on back with us for part four of flower math here on Floral Guild Radio.